Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Ahsoka series, a couple of tidbits for Obi-Wan and more. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's get straight into it. So we begin with a new interview by Vanity Fair with Rosario Dawson. The actress opened up about what it was like playing Ahsoka in live action and says she hopes she's going to play her for life. And I'm sure she's going to be a fixture of live action Star Wars for a very long time. I've seen some fans worried that they might kill her off at the end of her own series, but rest assured my dear friends, Ahsoka is a huge asset for Disney and Lucasfilm. It makes no financial sense on their end to kill her off and she's a fan favourite. We're going to be seeing her for a very long time in upcoming shows and maybe movies if that's where the Mandoverse and the Ahsoka show are leading. But Rosario's been great as live action Ahsoka in The Mandalorian Season 2 in The Book of Boba Fett and I just can't wait for her own series, Star Wars Ahsoka, which Vanity Fair confirm is releasing next year in 2023. Ooh, I can't wait. Now in this interview, Rosaria admits that while she's not a workout person herself, she got in shape and trained for the sake of Ahsoka. She is dedicated to the character, not to mention all of the intense lightsaber training too. There is so much to break down here guys, I'm just going to focus on the highlights, let's get straight into it. Rosario Dawson is this committed to a Star Wars character. She said, I'm actually thinking of shaving my head. Ever since her breakthrough in 1995's Kids, Dawson's enviably luxurious hair has helped make her a style icon, but she contemplated getting rid of it all as she prepared to take center stage in her own Star Wars series as the galactic hero, Ahsoka Tano. She said, quote, I've always wanted to. My mum shaved her hair for a 40th. I'm going to be 43 this year. I was thinking about doing it whenever we get around to actually filming. That'll be a really great time to shave my head because if it sucks, I'll just have Montrose on the whole time while I grow it out. And they go on to basically say that it was fine for the Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett to tuck her hair away because she was just a guest. But for the Ahsoka series, considering she's going to be there every single day on set, getting into makeup and costume, another solution is necessary, which is why she says she's either going to tuck her hair into the Montrose themselves or shave her head entirely. I love interviews like this because you really get an insight into the person behind the costume. And even though Rosario needs no introduction and she was already a beloved actress, hearing the process behind Ahsoka and her mindset with training, workouts and even things like the Montrose really puts a smile on my face. And so now guys, we're just going to fast forward a little bit because at the end, there's a really interesting part about the look that Ahsoka has at the end of Rebels, the one that a lot of fans liken to Gandalf and often we call her Ahsoka the White. Now, if you remember at Comic-Con a few years ago, Dave Filoni said that look has a very deep meaning, one which is going to be explored in the future. Well, the time has come and it's going to be explored in the Ahsoka show. The article says the white cloak is interpreted as a sign of further evolution evolution of leveling up and an ascension to a higher plane. So very similar to Lord of the Rings. Now even Rosario Dawson herself does not know the meaning of this in context of Ahsoka. She said quote, I do know that everyone talks about Ahsoka the Grey and Ahsoka the White with all these different things. There's an idea about her wisdom and how does she get there? I don't know, but it's going to be really fun to find out. And I think the biggest question, at least that I have and I've seen my friend Star Wars Santa talk about, is when does this moment at the end of Star Wars Rebels take place? Filoni kind of teased the man's and Book of Boba Fett might be before, so we might spend an entire season of the Ahsoka series leading up to that point, showing us this character development of Ahsoka. And as frustrating as it might be, the journey to find Ezra and Thrawn might only take place in the finale, or if there's going to be multiple seasons, then in season two. It could also be the reason why we've not heard of who's playing Ezra. Let's wait and see, my dear friends. So many questions that need answers, but this interview was absolutely awesome. Share your thoughts down below and now it's time to speak about the Kenobi series. So it turns out guys that this guy from the Kenobi trailer that we all thought was forlorn isn't. Deborah Chow spoke with uprox.com and debunked what a lot of fans assumed was the bounty hunter from The Empire Strikes Back. Deborah also reveals the name of this character. So uprox.com say, earlier today we spoke to Obi-Wan director Deborah Chow. Now in the trailer, we see a droid, a bounty hunter droid, who looks an awful lot like Forlom. When uprox.com mentioned the character from the trailer, they also asked her if it's pronounced Forlom or 4 LOM, and Chow said it's actually Forlom, but then continues but that's not actually Fallon though. It is actually a different droid named One Jack. Everyone thinks it's Fallon. So this new bounty hunter droid is called One Jack. 
And while this kind of sucks, there is a reason behind it. Forlom is still around by the time of The Empire Strikes Back, but one Jack is killed by Obi-Wan in the show. And while you might say that Forlom could have just been rebuilt by Zuckus, that's not the approach Deborah wanted to take. And I will admit, while I am kind of annoyed about this, it is great to meet new characters, so bring on one Jack. Maybe he'll be awesome. But who knows, maybe we will see some familiar bounty hunters in this series. And speaking of Obi-Wan Kenobi, my dear friends, Kamel Nanjiani's character has finally got a name. Kamel's role in the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi series has been wrapped in secrecy, but the actor finally revealed vital details about his character, including his name, base of operations, and profession. So his name is Hadja, as he told Entertainment Weekly, and quote, he's this guy who works on the streets of Dayu, which is the new Star Wars location that we haven't seen before that's absolutely gorgeous. And he's the guy who's worked really hard to stay out of the bigger conflicts at play. He just kind of wants to be his own guy. Survival for him is all that matters. And as we know from the making Star Wars leaks, Kamel's character is going to be a point of contact for Obi-Wan, a mutual friend of Bail Organa who's going to help him rescue Leia. Awesome stuff, my dear friends. Just six days to go. And so finally, we have an update for Jedi Survivor. I almost said Jedi Fallen Order 2, but as we know, the sequel is called Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And the update is that in spite of rumors, Cal Kestis is still going to be the lead protagonist in the game. And you might say to me, well, yeah, obviously the sky is blue, but there were some genuine concerns if Cal was going to be the protagonist or not, because some fans thought the Jedi Fallen Order games could be an anthology series. But no, we're picking up where we left off with the Mantis crew. During the latest episode of Games Beat Decides, journalist and insider Jeff Grubb stated that in spite of ongoing rumors and speculation, Cal Kestis will still be the lead protagonist in the upcoming Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order sequel, Jedi Survivor. Grubb said the following, he is, Cal Kestis is still the star of that game. He's the main character, but I suppose that doesn't mean there aren't other playable characters. I'm not saying there are either, I don't know. But what I was told is that Cal Kestis is the main protagonist still. And Grubb's comments have echoed what Bespin Bulletin have been saying over the last year or so. As per the recent news, Jedi Survivor is releasing in February or March of next year. And while it does not have a dedicated panel at Star Wars Celebration next week, it is rumored to be a surprise announcement. So let's wait and see. So just to check in with you guys, how are you feeling less than one week out from Celebration and Kenobi? What are you most looking forward to? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And I will be covering all new announcements. And of course, on the 27th next Friday, I will be doing full episode breakdowns of episodes one one and two of the Kenobi series. It's going to be a very busy, but very exciting and fun day. I can't wait to share all of that with you. I miss doing full episode breakdowns. If you enjoyed this video, my dear friends, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg. Have a good one.